Okay. Welcome to your another second session of the exam preparations. Now, <clears throat> our questions, there might be some way they are missing some headers and all that. Don't panic. I will use an alternative question paper for that, or we will skip that question and use another alternative question paper for that purpose. Um, okay, so let's start with question one. <clears throat> Which one of the following statements is correct with regards to experiment, counting rules, assigning probabilities. Number A, an experiment described by a sequence of four steps and four outcomes possible for each step. Uh, step one, three outcomes possible for step two and two outcomes possible for step three and step four will have a total of 24 experimental outcomes. Is number B, the number of combinations of five items that can be selected from a group of eight will be 6,720. C, the number of permutation Five items that can be selected from eight items are 56. D, in an experiment with seven equal likely outcomes, each experiment outcome has a probability of 0 0.14. E, a classical method of assigning probabilities is appropriate when data is available to estimate the proportion of the type the outcome will occur if the experiment is repeated a large number of times. Now, number one is your multiplication rule. Number two is combination. Number three, permutation. Number four, normal probability. Outcome satisfying the event. And number four is just an explanation or a definition of what classical method is. So which one of these statements? So it means for A up until D, you need to do some calculations, right? So <clears throat> you know, for this one, you will say it's three multiplied by two, multiplied by two, how many steps? Four outcomes from step one. Okay, so I'm missing four. Four multiplied by three, multiply by two. Because there are three outcomes and there are two outcomes for step three and step four. So then it means two again. So you need to calculate that outcome and see if it gives you 24. And remember, we're looking for the in correct for the correct statement. Number B, you need to go and calculate the combination on your calculators. You know uh, the formula is NCR. So we know that N will be the bigger number and R will be the smaller number. So here they give you eight and five. So therefore it means it's eight C five. Step number C is permutation and PR. So it means you need to go and calculate 8P5. And step number four, you just need to do one divide by seven because it's outcome satisfying is just X divide by N. Okay. 
have you calculated or are you still busy yes um um i got the correct answer is b because uh, uh, i mean it's c because it's uh, 6720 Hmm. Are you saying it's B or it's C? You 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 were cutting off. No, I, I, uh, <laughs> oh, it's C. I, I was saying it's C because eight permutation five gives me. Uh, uh, um, wait, Lizzie. Mm. Um. Oh, but I did a uh, eight permutation five, ne? And it gives me sixty-seven twenty. So I don't know if the the, the B will be correct. Okay, wait. But, okay. Ha, no, ha, wait. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Okay, give me your answer for A. Let's let's go through each each one then. Give me your answer for A. What is four times three times two times two? It's 48, 48. right? Oh, 40. Yeah. Therefore, it means mm -hmm. this is not correct because it says it's 24, right? Okay, oh, yes. then we move yeah. on. To the next one. Oh. What is oh my uh, eight combination five? No, eight combination fifty-six. Oh it's my god. Mm. Equals to fifty-six. Therefore, it means B is incorrect, right? Then yes. move to yes. the permutation. Eight permutation five is six thousand seven hundred twenty. Six seven twenty. And it says it's 56, incorrect. so therefore C is incorrect. Then move to the next one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 0 uh -huh. 0 0.14. 0 0.14 correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So therefore the answer is correct. So we know that those ones are incorrect. So the answer is that one. Okay, because on this question, we don't have uh, the statements that are supposed to be there. I cannot, I don't want us to waste time trying to figure out what they're trying to ask you to do there. For now, we're going to skip it. We'll, we can always come back to those kind of questions later on. Let's move on to, to question three. I'm already giving you answers. So question three, consider. Sorry, guys, I'm I'm having flu. It seems as if like these days I'm sick all the time. I must take a holiday. Consider two event A and B. The probability of A being equals to 0 0.5, the probability of B being 0 0.22 and the probability of A and B being equals to 0, 0,11. Which one of the following statement is correct? And they gave you some statements here. So you need to use the information given to answer this. So we can go through each one of them. Each statement then do the process of elimination, right? To see which one is the correct one. So event A and B are mutually exclusive. If events are mutually exclusive, we know that the probability of A and B should be equals to zero. Are they equals to zero? As to one. Look at the statement that it's given. No, that's false. That is not, it's not equals to zero. So this one is incorrect. So we move on to the next one. Event A and B are independent. So they are telling you that if event A and B are independent, then the probability of A given B will be equals to 0, 0,55. 
So you need to test that. To test that if those two events are independent, then the probability of B given A should be 0, 0,05. Let's see. The rule says, remember, for independence, it says if event A and B, yeah, if event A, a and B. If event A and B are independent, therefore the, the conditional probability of the given event will not have any bearing on the probability of that event you are looking for, right? So therefore the probability of A given B will be the same as the probability of A or the probability of B given A will be the same as the probability of B. And here they gave us that this event A and B are independent. Therefore, the probability of A given B should be the same as the probability of B. Is this the same? What is the probability of B? It's 0 0.22. 0 0.22. Therefore, it means it is not correct. <clears throat> right? Because it should say, it should be equals to the probability of B and 0 0.05 is the probability of A. So it's not correct. Um, I'm gonna skip number C, I'll go to D and E. I'm just doing this so that you are able to know when you get this type of questions in the exam, how to tackle them, right? So if A complement, or if A guppy is a complement of A, which it's A complement, then the probability of A complement is 0, 0,78. Is that true? Is the probability of A complement, it should be one minus the probability of A. So you do the calculation. Will you get the probability of A complement? 0, 0,78. No, that's false. It's also not correct because it will, the probability of A complement is 0, 0,45, right? Because A is 0, 0,55. You just say 1 minus 0, 0,55 and that will give you 0, 0,45. So it's not the same. Probability of B complement, the same will happen. You need to just calculate the probability of a B complement by one minus the probability of B, which is one minus our B is zero comma two two. And that will be zero comma seven eight, I think. Yes. <clears throat> so now what's left is C. The probability of A given, oh, sorry, A or B. So you need to go back to the formula for this one. Just gonna this. You need to go to the formula. You need to go and calculate that if the probability of A or B, the formula says, is the same as the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and, and B. And then you go and do the calculations. The probability of A is 0 0.55 plus the probability of B is 0 0.22 minus the probability of A and B 0 0.1. And the answer is 0 0.66. 0 0.66, so therefore it means this is the correct statement. the correct statement.
Okay, also similar. Who can tell me what are these values that they gave us here? Are these events or probabilities? They are probabilities. These are probabilities. So anything that it resembles a decimal when you are do busy with probabilities, it means a probability. So, so since they gave you the probability, you don't have to go and use formulas. You still need to apply the formulas where they are necessary, but you can also answer some of the questions directly. However, there are some things that are missing. What is missing is your total column, right? Because on your total column, you will be able to calculate what is a simple probability because these are joint probabilities that they gave you. So, which one of the following statement is incorrect? So you need to find the incorrect one. Number A, you need to calculate the probability of cisgender, which is cisgender will be the first column. So it means if you have calculated the total there, you'll be able to state whether this is correct or not. Otherwise, cisgender is the probability of 0 0.76 plus 0 0.7 plus 0 0.3. I'm just giving you one example. You will have to do the rest on your own. So is number A correct or incorrect? You just need to do the calculation quickly. Yes, it's correct. It's zero comma eight six. The probability of law. It's correct also. It's correct because you have to add all these values here. The probability of cisgender and law. It's a joint probability. It's correct, it's correct also. It is correct because it is just the joint probability of cisgender and low. The probability of cisgender or low. This one, you need to do some calculations. Remember, you will have to go and find the probability of cisgender plus the probability of law minus the probability of cisgender and law. That's the calculation you need to do. We know that the probability of cisgender is 0 0.86 plus the probability of law is 0 0.76 minus the probability of cisgender and law 0 0.76. The answer is 0 0.86. The answer is 0 0.86, which that therefore it means this is the incorrect one. The last one, it says events cisgender and law are dependent. So you need to go and check that. <clears throat> you need to go and check that the probability of Oh, cisgender, let's use the name the way they have them. Cisgender given law, it should be, it should not be equal. You have to go and prove that it's not equal to the probability of cisgender for you to prove that they are dependent. So let's see. The probability of cisgender. Gender given 
So we need to first go in because this one we know the probability of cisgender is 0 0.86. We just need to find out what the probability of cisgender given below. So that you will find by saying the probability of cisgender given low will be given by the probability of a joint probability of both of them, cisgender and low, divide by the probability of the given, which is the probability of low. So now to test that, our joint probability of cisgender and low is 0 0.76. The probability of low is 0, 0.76. Therefore, the probability of cisgender given low is equals to 1. And we have proven that because if this is equals to 1 and the probability of cisgender is equals to 0, 0.86, therefore they are not equal. Therefore, it means they are dependent, which means that is correct. Because if they were equal, we would say that they are independent from one another. Good happiness. Are we good? Yes. Let's move to the next question. Same information. Now they want you to calculate the probability that they feel moderate level of being marginalized. Hmm. What is that now? Given that randomly selected individual identifies as transgender, what is the probability that they feel moderate level of being marginalized? So you need to calculate the probability of moderate given that the person is a transgender. So you'll have to write the formula, which is the joint probability of moderate and trans divide by the given which is the probability of a trans. <clears throat> and then just substitute the values. What is the probability of moderate and trans? 0 0.01. Which is 0 0.01. And the probability of trans? Probability low. It's 0 0.05. 0 0.05. It's 0 0.05. 0 0.05. Then do the calculation. 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.05. 0 0.2. 0 0.2. What is the expected value of a discrete probability distribution with N8 equal, equally likely outcomes? Huh. Okay, there's some wedding missing in this sentence. What is the expected value of a discrete probability with N of equals to 8 with equally likely, uh, likely outcomes? or having maybe the equally equally it should have been having equally likely outcomes so what does that mean so if for example <clears throat> you have eight of them you can even start with zero or you can start with one it doesn't really matter which one you start with so we know we have one two three four five six seven eight outcomes and the probability they've got the same equal outcome right so we can use the same 
say what will be the probability of having the same likelihood, which it will be one divided by eight, like we did with the previous one, oh, seven. One divided by eight will give us what will be the probability. One divided by eight. Zero. Zero point. 0, 0.125. So this 0, will 1, be, 2, yeah. So this will be our x, and we generally we generated our probabilities for each outcome. Okay, so that will be 0, 0.125, 0, 0.125, 0, 0.125, 0, 0.125, 0, 0.125, 0, 0.125. Zero comma one two five will be like that, and we know that the expected value is calculated by means of the sum of your x observation times its corresponding probability. And you can do this two ways. Are you winning? You just need to multiply each outcome and add all of them by its corresponding probability and add all of them. That's the first one. The second one, or what you can do with your expected value, it, it most likely will work for this scenario because they've got the same outcome, is just multiplying your probability that you have, multiply that with the sum of your outcome. It will still give you the same answer. I got, yeah, I got 4.5. If I use the first step, E at X is equal to the sum of X into P at X. Yeah, so if you use the other step, uh, so one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus plus six, plus seven, plus eight, will give you 36. So you will have 0, 0.125 times 36, which will give you 4,5. 4, 36 multiplied by 0.125 equals 4.5. Or you can just use the first method, which is the general method that we use uh, by multiplying your x with its corresponding probability, adding the next, adding, 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 adding. You will still get the same answer. Uh, sorry, Lizzie, how did you get uh, 36? You add your x observation. This is the sum of the x observations. 1 plus 2 plus 3 oh. plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay. The next question. Given your x, okay, I'm going to assume that this is the whole table. Given your x and your probabilities. And they also ask you to calculate the expected value. So you can use the same method that we did previously. It will not, it will not work. 
but you can use the normal formula, which is the sum of your x value times its corresponding probability. So you first need to find what the value of the question mark is. What is the question mark? It's 0 0.1900. Zero comma one nine. Zero comma one one nine. So you all agree with that? So the sum of all these values should give you hundred percent. Should give you one. Yes. Um... Yes, they gave us one because yes, um, the answer on number 12 got 0 0.19. Yes, they gave me one total. Yeah, but that is not the answer. The question says calculate the expected value of X. Right? 0 0.19 is the yes. question mark. So you still need to do the calculation. Multiplying x times 0 0.3. So you still need to say 1 times 0 0.3 plus 2 times, oh, let's put it in bracket, 0 0.19 plus 3 times 0 0.17 plus Four times zero point one seven plus five times zero point one seven. You still need to do that. Two point seven two. Are we all good or are we unhappy? Happiness. 2.72. Yes. Uh, sorry, Lizzie. Mm -hmm. Is there any faster method than mm -hmm. doing writing anything, everything down and calculating on manually on the calculator? Mm -hmm. they, if, if you want to, oh, that's the other thing that I need. Uh, we need to discuss um, at some point we will have to touch on this so that you guys you know uh, what to expect and remember <clears throat> you needed to go and read your documents on the um, invigilator app right that your lecturer have sent to say because you're writing a multiple choice question and they gave you the process in terms of how you're going to operate that and the app, it takes a picture of yourself and it also keeps track every 30 seconds. It, it takes a screenshot of your whatever you are using. <laughs> so if you toggle between different things, I don't know, you because you, you your lecture said you can try it with the trial exam paper to see how the process work. I'm not sure if he will, it's one of the questions that I still need to find out from him. Whether when you're doing the trial exam paper, uh, will it send him a report to show whether, how many students um, it found them wanting, it found like, um, whatever, the, the way they put it on those documents. So we still need to finalize that process. But to be 100% sure and not to be penalized for silly things or small things, 
I will rather suggest that you use your calculator for now. Practice using your calculator, practice doing things manually. Don't rely too much on the template that we gave you because remember on the template, it means you need to toggle between two screens or toggle between uh, your MOOC exam paper and the template. What if the time it needs to take a screenshot, you are on your Excel spreadsheet? Right? And it can't take a screenshot of whatever you are busy with right there, right there. So please stay safe, uh, rely on manual work. Oh, there are shortcuts, but I mean, in the exam, they won't give you too many data sets. They will give you a small set like this, which it is manageable. You can do that in five minutes, calculating this in five minutes or even less. <clears throat> Excuse me, Lizzie, would you mind if I ask a question? Yes, you can. So what of the PDF that has critical values on it? Yeah. Are we allowed to use that? During the tables. Data? Yes, yeah. the tables, you will be allowed to use them. The only thing that I'm not sure about is those, like I'm saying, the, the things like your Excel sheets, your opening of your study guide. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah no, yes, I understand. Those kind of things. Yeah, those kind of things that might jeopardize your whole exam. You don't have to, but the, like the tables, it's fine with the tables because right. you will be given tables. You need to talk, you need to navigate to those tables anyway, if they give you. Understood. Is there a certainty that we aren't allowed to use the study uh, guides? I'm not, I'm just asking. Because um, there's I, been discussions whether or not we're not to use notes and things like that, and there's lots of mixed discussions about it. I I know that there are those kind of discussions, uh, and and those are the discussions that we always have privately, you know, because these recordings are made public. Of course. <laughs> of course. No, of so, course. I'm not trying to implicate yeah, you. I'm yeah, clearly no, no. Those to questions ask. we can always answer them later when everything is done. So now let's concentrate on getting the. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Through the study right. questions. <laughs> and of later course. on we can talk. Yes. So question Thank eight. You. Yes. A building inspector would like to conduct an inspection of rent uh, of 13 randomly selected new built houses to check whether or not they comply with municipal regulations. The inspector knows from the past experience that eight out of 10 new built houses will comply with municipal regulation. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? And this is a binomial, a binomial question. What is story? So they given you your N, which is your random some uh, selected houses. <clears throat> they also told you how to calculate your probability, which is your your probability of success. So eight out of ten. So you you can just start now by calculating it. What is eight over ten? Zero point eight. That is your probability of success. Now we will at some point somewhere they might you might need to go to the table as well. So let's look at all the the questions that we have here. We'll use the process of elimination for each one of them. The experiment can be described as a binomial with 13 trials. Is that we're looking for the incorrect statement? That's correct. That is correct. Yes. Two outcomes are possible for each try comply uh, with the regulations, it's a success, and does not comply, it's a failure. With binomial, the, the name says it all. 
by me true, true. Yeah, that's true. That's correct. The probability that a newly built house doesn't comply with uh, the municipality regulation is 0, 0,8. So does not comply. And we know that what our probability of success was 0, 0.8. What will be the probability of failure? It will be 0 0.2. It will be 0 0.2. So this is the incorrect one. The expected value, uh, if you didn't know how to calculate the expected value, it's n times the probability of success. So it would have been 13 times 0 0.8. <coughs> and each inspection constitutes a trial with independent results. We know that for binomial, it's always independent trials. So, okay. Okay, this is another one. Uh, I'm gonna, there, are, there were two questions that looks like that, right? But we couldn't answer. Didn't answer that. I don't think I have another question that looks similar to that one. But we couldn't answer. It was in the previous other question papers. Just want to see if I don't have. I don't have. It is with the exponential one, which is poison. OK, so with this one, we can't also answer because there are no additional information on this screen. But when I skip that, we can always come back to them. If you if you are able to go on to my UNISA, those who have, you can take a screenshot and share it with us, and then we will come back to those questions when we have time <clears throat> so that we don't waste more time. Consider the building inspector's visit once again. Suppose now that 16. Oh, yeah, because probably that other information was related to this. Suppose now that they built 16, so we no longer have 13, we have 16 houses. Remember that the inspector knows that the past ex uh, experience that 8 out of 10. And we also did calculate that it was 0, 0,8 of houses comply with the municipal regulation. Now, the question here is what is the standard deviation? Already gave you the answer, but anyway, you just need, you still need to know how to calculate it. So, to calculate the standard deviation, which is S is the square root of n times pi times 1 minus <clears throat> so you just need to go and calculate the square root of uh, 16 times 0 0.8 times 1 minus 0 0.8. 1 comma 6. 6, which is option D. just want to see this one question. OK, because they didn't give the information. I can't make it out as well. Um, we're going to be skipping a whole lot of them. Because they didn't pop it out. And they, the, your lecture also says there is no other way that we can get us unless he takes a screenshot of some of the questions. But it also, yeah, one of those. Did I give you the answer? Now let's consider Poisson distribution. 
<clears throat> with the expected number of occurrence per interval equal 410. So this is poison. So you must always remember that that is your lambda. And they also say you must use your poison table on this one to find the probability. And it says determine the probability that the number of occurrences per interval is at least. What is at least? Less or minus? Less or minus? Nope. That is at least. I'm sorry. Uh, less or equals to. Nope. What is at least? Greater than equal to. At least it's greater than or equals to three. Always remember that. Um, how do I make you remember all this now? At least when when the, a bus has an accident and they were the bus carries, let's say it carries 160 passengers, right? And the bus gets into an accident and the emergency personnel come on and they tell you how many people have died in that accident. It's the worst case scenario that I'm giving you. And they will say, because they don't know the number because of the people that are admitted at the hospital or those that are also on critical and those that are still on route. At the point that they were there, at least they will always use words like at least three people have been confirmed to be dead because they are not sure of if there are more than that number because they can be more, right? So always remember that, that at least means it can be more, 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 more. It can be exactly like that, or it can be more than that. Thank That's you, what at least is. Okay. Maybe by using that scary example will get you to remember at least. <laughs> okay. So enough with at least, let's get to it. So you need to go to the poison table to know whether you're going to have to add all of them or do some magic. So we need to go to the table and go to poison. And I hope you still remember how to read the tables, right? So your poison table, are split by x value or oh, by lambdas first and then for every lambda table there are x values linking to that so we're looking for 4.1 <coughs> and there is 4.1 and 3 is at this point so it says at least so it means we need to add all of these values can you see how many they are? Alternatively, because we cannot go and add from probability of x is equals to 3 plus the probability of x is equals to 4 plus up until you get to the end. You can say, alternatively, you can say 1 minus because we know that we find in the probability it will be what minus the probability that x is less than 3. Why x is less than 3? It is the opposite of, it is the complement of that. So therefore, it's the same as 1 minus, and I'm going to put it into the bracket, the probability that x is equals to 0 plus the probability that x is equals to 1 plus the probability that x is equals to 2. Those are the only probabilities you need to add instead of adding the entire table. So let's go back to the table. <clears throat> so instead of adding all these values, you're just going to add only those three values and subtract them from 1. So. 
do the calculation. 0 0.0166 plus 0 0.0679 plus 0 0.1393. Okay. The, answer. the answer is zero comma two two three eight. Zero comma two two three eight. No, the did answer. You subtract, did you subtract I, it from 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 one? No, not yet. After subtracting is a zero oh, comma seven six two. So you did. You're not giving me the answer. You're giving me the answer of the summation zero point. Yes. Two, two, three, eight. So subtract it from one, you will get zero comma seven seven six two. Zero comma seven seven six two. Do you guys understand? Is that clear? Yes. Are we good? Are we happy? 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 Perfect. Uh, I really don't understand why can't I get there. Okay. Don't worry. Me worry me. Okay, it seems like because I don't have did you guys post the let's see. The questions that I skipped. Let's see if we have. No, I don't have any anything. Okay, so we how can about, use. Uh, we don't post. How about we just call it call it out? No, I've got more questions for you anyway. Okay, all right. So this is the previous year's uh, activity. So I'm not gonna touch because some of the questions are repeating from last year's um, assignments as well. So like question one, you already did a similar question, so we're not going to do questions like that. So, <clears throat> um, let's skip that as well. I just want you to get more practice in terms of some of these questions that might look complicated. <laughs> so which one of the following statement is incorrect with regards to some relationships of probabilities. Sorry, I'm giving you the answers. A, given the probability of A and B is equal to 0 0.4 and the probability of B being equal to 0 0.5. If A and B are independent, then the probability of A will be 0 0.8. What do they mean? You need to go and find what will be the probability of A given B. And if that probability of A given B should be the same as the probability of A. So, because they say then the probability of A is 0, 0,8. So, we just need to make sure that is that correct. So, let's go and calculate 0, 0,8. The given probability given. The probability of A given B is given by the probability of A and B divided by the probability of the given, which is B, because that is the information they have given you, A and B. So, the probability of A and B is 0 0.4, divided by the probability of B is 0 0.5. 0 0.8. Which is equal to 0 0.8. So, therefore, it means number A. Because if my probability of A given B uh, is 0, 0,8, then if A and B are independent, then the probability of A will also be the same as the probability of the given, right? So number A is correct. Remember, we're looking for the incorrect one. 
if event if two events a and b are mutually exclusive then the probability of a and b will be equals to zero that is a straightforward right it's correct right yes do you agree that is also correct because if mutually exclusive events therefore it means the joint event will be equals to zero <clears throat> c if two events a and b are independent then the probability of a given b will be the same as the probability of b is that correct incorrect it is Supposed incorrect to. it should be equals to the probability of a so that is the incorrect statement that we are looking for two seem like someone knows probabilities if two events a and b are complementary then a and b must be mutually exclusive yep if two events a and b are complementary then the sum of all probabilities should also be equals to one yep that is the definition of probabilities and properties of probabilities <clears throat> some of these questions we dealt with them during our practice our sessions like with the content revision session question and answer sessions we dealt with some of these kind of questions so i'm not going to cover all of them let's see if we can find another interesting question but i want to go to the one where we use tables more or actually this one is more important where they give you sentences right so that you know how to use the sign the signs are very important okay so the first one the probability that two learners are absent on a given day is zero comma to zero is that correct two learners absent yes it's correct that will be correct or oh, we're looking for which one of the following statement is incorrect so we're looking for the incorrect statement so that one is correct what is the probability that between two and five learners are absent on a given day assume two and five are both not inclusive what do they mean by that it means you are only considering three and four three and four oh. yes so is are they is the probability of two and five exclusive 0.45 that's true that is correct the probability that at most so what is at most what is the probability that at most two learners are absent on a given day what is at most less or equals to less or equals to So it means it must include two and anything below two. So is that That's 0 0.5? Yes, it's correct. That is correct. The probability that at least two learners are absent on a given day. Greater or equals to? at least it's greater than or equal <clears throat> so it means anything bigger than or equals to two must be included and if they are is that equals to zero comma five no. incorrect it is incorrect because that will be 70. absolutely probabilities are good is the incorrect one and 
uh, the last one it talks about inclusive between two and five so it means you just do two and five which is 0 0.70 Okay, so you when you when you when it comes to discrete probabilities and especially when you have tables like this, always pay attention to the sign and the weight uh, and the inclusive, exclusive, the less than and the greater than, right? So today's session actually went quicker than last week's session. Um. Okay, I'm not going to ask you to do the expected value. Um, let's go to the binomial. So we also answered a similar question like this in the binomial. So I'm not going to ask you about this one. We can continue. Yeah, though this one asks a different, even though it's the same as the previous one, but I think on this one we have more than We've got new things. So <coughs> we have eight rural schools, which is N, one out of four, which will be your probability of success will be one divided by four. What is the probability of success? Zero comma two five. That will be zero comma two five. So if we know that, which one of the following statement is incorrect? So we know that this is a binomial question. Number one, the probability that at most one of the eight schools have a shortage of teachers. What is at most? Remember that at most is greater than or equals to, right? So what no. is the what no. is don't you say it's less than ah. and then at least yeah, it's or greater than well, at most it is it's less or equals to ah yo you are so awake at ten past eight. Okay, so <laughs> that is the probability that x is less than or equals to one. So we need to go to the table to determine whether do we want to go through all of them, or do you want to only use um, the opposite thing? So let's go to the binomial table because it's less than, right? Sorry, let's go back there. Because it's less than, so we're going to only look at the probability of x is equal to 0 plus the probability that x is equal to 1. Those are the two values that we need so also oh yeah the hands i wanted to use more exercises because we need to also oh, i need to focus. yes let's go like that you need to know how to read the binomial table you still remember that the binomial table has the left and the right uh, values and the bottom values and the top values. So anything yes. at the top where the probabilities are small, we use the left-hand side. So the top, left-hand side. The bottom probabilities, like here at the bottom, there are probabilities here. We use the right, which are those probabilities here at the bottom. But they are also here at the bottom. So this is 0 0.50. Uh, what is that? 45 will be 0. Point, uh, uh, 55. And 0. Point five, uh, and so on and so forth, right? So this probability is here at the bottom. We use the right hand side so you just need to always know that so yeah our probability is 0 0.25 so it is the smaller probability so it means we're using the top part of the table so we need to look at the left hand side so let's go there our n is eight it's also very important 
So we need to go to where n is 8, which is this table that I didn't. N, this one I must turn it clockwise. Here we go. Okay, so we know that at the top here, we've got all these probabilities 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0,001 and so on. <coughs> So we're looking for n of 8 and 0, 0,25. So 0, 0,25 will be probably 0, 0,75 will be 25. Yes. So 0, 0,25 will be there. Even if I can go and count how many columns 0, 0.25 is on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I can count six, one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go, 0 0.25. So that is 0 0.25 and that is eight. So we only looking for where X is zero and one. We just go to where X is zero and one. Are we happy? Are we good? All good. Yes, 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 good. Okay, so did you get the same answer? Yes. So that is correct. The variant, uh, the variance is just your n times your pi times one minus your pi. That will give you the variance. Ah, yes, we're still on the binomial. So that will be your variant. So what is your 8 times 0 0.25 times 1 minus 0 0.25 will give you the variant. We're going to finish at half past. Don't worry, we are almost done. 1.5 is the variant. 1.5 is the variance, so therefore it means B is also correct. What is the probability that at least zero, at least zero is the probability that X is greater than or equals to zero? So at least zero means all of them. So what will be all of them? The sum of all probabilities are equals to? One, one. always. Always, yes. yes. So C will be the incorrect one because it says C is zero. Uh, the probability that at most eight the probability that at most x is less than or equals to 8. And because we're dealing with 8, because this is binomial from 8 onwards, so it means it's all of them as well. So it should be equals to 1. So that is correct. The probability that at least 1, so that will be the probability of x greater than 1. So that should be correct. And uh, which other thing uh, we haven't spoke about? Oh, the formulas 
this. If they ask you whether it's for poison or it's for a uh, binomial, um, they, then it means you need to know the formula. Oh, sorry. Let's write the formula for binomial. Um, you don't have to memorize the formulas. Remember, I told you, you can have your formula sheet that you, a summary of every study unit's formula sheet that you can keep handy to help you uh, recognize which formula to use when you are answering the questions. They might give you the formulas. If they don't give you the formulas, they will tell you to bring your own formulas and the tables because those are two important things that you need. Um, so for binomial, to find the probability of a binomial, you need to remember the NCR uh, pi to the power X, one minus pi and minus X. So that will be the formula to use. Um, and when they give you information and they don't complete like we like like on one of the questions, remember one of the questions was like that, where they didn't fully answer all the questions. So this was probably one of the statements they was answering this question where they had have you to do N C R to the power power X times one minus power n minus x. So you just apply this formula, but you don't have to solve everything. You just do a little bit so that then you can be able to identify which one of the options are correct. It's similar to that. So it's similar to this. So knowing that this is a Poisson distributed value, and that is one of the key things that you always would would help when you answer the question is statements like this in the question poison binomial and those things they help you uh, clarify which formula you need to be using so for a poison distribution with the mean of three so we know that this is a lambda <clears throat> and then it says use the formula to calculate the probability and they expect you not to calculate the entire formula and find the probability, but to see if you know how to substitute into the formula. So we know that the formula to calculate the probability of a poison, it's your lambda x times e to the power of negative lambda. Or you can do vice versa. I am looking at the options here, so they wrote it like this. <clears throat> so if I know uh, what is the probability that three learners will be upset, so they already telling me that I am going to have to have my X. Probability that X is equals to three, which gives me my average, which is my lambda is three as well. So it will be three to the power of three. multiply by my e to the power of minus three and looking at the what the wait what is three to the power of three it's twenty seven it's 27. <clears throat> I think on this question there was an error. Because here it says calculate the probability that three learners are absent randomly from this is 27, 3 to the power of 3 is 27. If the mean is 3, then it means 
E. The answer should be 27 times E to the power of negative three. But they say the answer is D on this one. So they made a mistake some of the question. <clears throat> So, but those are the kind of things that you will uh, you will have to learn in order for you to be able to practice more. And that concludes which other question that we didn't do. Um, I'm not sure if you had difficulties with your assignment on, uh, we have seven minutes on this question. The challenge with this is because I don't, I don't have the full question here to know what you were asked. Mm. It makes it difficult to know how to help you answer this question as well. So I think that is the only other question that we were not able to answer. So which other question we were not able to answer? So. If we can have this question too, this, we can discuss it on WhatsApp as well. Those who have access to it can share on WhatsApp and then we can, someone can help you answer that question and then we address this one. You can also post that one as well uh, because we were not able to answer that. Um, and question 11. And question 11, it's more about oh, binomial. So we did do a lot of other examples on the binomial. Okay, and question 13. If you want us to have a further discussion on this. Otherwise, then I'll see you Sunday when we look at assignment three. Have a lovely lovely evening are there any questions thank you very much if there are no questions then i can stop the recording just give me a second and then we can have a family